Hello everybody. It has been a minute. I don't even blame you if you forgot who I am, if you thought this channel was now inactive, <laughs> but I'm back. If you were either new here or you missed my last vlog that I posted like five weeks ago, I think, um, <laughs> I went away. I went to Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia and I just got back a few days ago and two days after arriving home, I got a really gnarly cold. I mean, I think you can still hear it a little bit, but I'm feeling much better. We put on some clothes today, we took a shower <laughs> and I was in the mood to film. So I thought that I would do it. So here we are. I'm happy to be back, back to my routine and hopefully get on a back into my reading game because I just have not been in the mood at all. So yeah, here's to more reading and hopefully some fire summer reads. To kind of jumpstart my reading, I did do a little bit of cheeky book buying once I was back. So I'm going to share that with you as well. But I just figured we could talk about the books that I read while I was away. I showed you some contenders, so I don't think these are going to be uh, unfamiliar to you, but I just thought I'd, I'd run through them with you and yeah, tell you my thoughts. So the first book that I read, which I actually started it before I went on my trip and I just read it on the plane ride over, and that was Eileen Miles' uh, Inferno, and that is their like autobiography. And I enjoyed it. I really liked the beginning. Started off with such a bang. They kind of lost me in the middle and then I really enjoyed the end. <laughs> I think I would take it as, or read it as a um, short story collection because the book is not structured in chronological order. You don't really know where Eileen is when you start a new like story, if you will. So it just kind of, uh, they just jump around. But I just really like the way that they write. Very distinct Eileen voice that I really appreciate. Uh, actually, my introduction to their work was Chelsea Girls, which is like auto fiction. And I would recommend to do a little bit of research and look up Eileen Miles on YouTube and just watch some of their talks because it just gives you a fuller picture of who they are as an author. And it just makes their work all the more special at least that was my experience so for what it's worth maybe look them up and I just suggest doing this in general with uh authors but I feel like they're just such a like prolific figure that it's worthwhile to do a little bit of research before you dive on into their work or while you're reading so or do the audiobook actually um so yes that was my first book and then I totally switched gears and I started reading Friday Black and I'm blanking on the name of the author right now, but I think that's their debut uh, short story collection. And that was recommended to me by my dear friend, Tanya. She blindly followed that recommendation. <laughs> like I think she had read like two stories and they just sounded gnarly and unlike anything I'd really read before. So I was like, yeah, this is great. Um, short stories, so like very digestible. I didn't think I would have a whole lot of time to read. So I just thought short stories would be the way to go. Excuse me. The cold is still with us. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, those stories really packed a punch. Such a distinct voice. I just really, really appreciated what the author was trying to do. They're, all the stories are really like dark, um, mixed in with like dark humor and satire and just speaks to the times that we're living in. It, like just imagine if the stories were set in a world like our own, but where racism, um, the injustices in the prison industrial complex go even more rampant. And if there was even more like social and wealth inequality, like just turn all of those, you know, problematic things in our modern day society and just illustrate what life would be like if that was the case. So none of the stories are super far-fetched where you're like, oh my God, this would never happen now. Like, no, 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 no. It really just challenges you and um, is done in just such a smart way. I just really like the stories. <coughs> Excuse me. 
the tone of the book and the way that it's written it reminds me a little bit of sorry to bother you that movie that came out a couple of years ago mixed in with a little bit of like get out it's just that kind of narrative and i just was totally blown away i can't wait to see what else that author comes out with because yeah it just a lot of the stories and in, in that collection just really stand out and i'm still thinking about them although i read that book like three and a half weeks ago so yeah highly highly recommend those stories really pack a punch they will stay with you and also just make you like question our society and the like fuckery in which we find ourselves in a lot of the times so then i read either or which is the sequel to the idiot i did a whole reading vlog about it and i absolutely loved that book either or did not disappoint <laughs> thank you so much penguin random house canada that was just honestly the best send-off gift i could have received it was just such a joy to have that book with me and enter back into selin's world and her mind if you liked the idiot you're gonna love it you're gonna freaking love it if you haven't read it already i'm sure you've read it if you're a fan this is nothing new there's amazing reviews of um that book already so i'm not even gonna waste my breath but <laughs> i just love how introspective and even more mature celine is in this novel and her ambition to or desire rather to live life like a novel and say yes to certain things that i don't go counter a little bit to what she would have done in previous years and just putting herself in new situations and analyzing those choices and the people that she's meeting and excuse me engaging intimately with and just basically what it means to start saying yes to things and in that really crucial moment where you're experiencing a lot of firsts and um questioning who you are and your choices and it was just so beautifully done. I also really appreciate what she does too in The Idiot, how Selen uses literature as a way to find answers or parallels in her own life to try and work through and understand her frustrations or her relationships predominantly with Ivan. And I just really like that seeking comfort in literature, I think is just such a beautiful thing. I also just think Selena's, or Selen, Selene, I don't know, I'm sorry. I, in my head, she's Selene, but in your head, she's probably something else. Um, <laughs> I just find her so fucking funny. Like, I found that to be the case too with the idiot. Like there were some points where like, I literally was like chuckling a little bit. Um, and that did not disappoint. That really came through in either or. And I just cannot wait to read more about this girl's life there is just like this level of investment which is so like funny because i don't think i've like experienced this with any other characters really the same way where i genuinely feel like she is like my younger cousin uh or sister that i need i'm so invested in and i like want to make sure that she's like doing okay and like what's happening like give me the tea on the boys give me the tea on you know how you're feeling with your academic pursuits <coughs> all of those things i just want to be like right there with her and have the privilege to be part of her life in in whatever detached like voyeuristic way this is <laughs> as a reader but yeah i just loved it i'm so happy to um, have had that reading experience especially on vacation it was just like the perfect vacay beach read so if you haven't read it jump on it right now and the next book i read was lonnie by max porter and that was 1000 percent influenced by anna she made a video all about it and i was like sold <laughs> and i freaking loved it i literally read that book in a day and a half i was just like power reading i was so consumed it sucked me in right away and like anna said i'm stealing her words entirely <laughs> she described this book as a like an adult fairy tale like enchanted story and that's exactly what it is i don't want to give anything away because that's where the magic lies in this book but the writing is just so poetic and like whimsical and enchanting and you follow this young boy who's very special and peculiar and um his family uh that lives in this small town and in within the town there's this like 
just mystical trickster, like shapeshifter man. And he figures into the story in quite a significant way. And um, there is also an artist who ends up taking Lonnie in as his like student. And yeah, it centers around Lonnie. His family's involved. This artist man is involved. The town like myth creature is involved and I'm making no sense but if any of that sort of sounds interesting beautiful writing incredibly captivating plays a lot with form and style and um yes I don't want to say anything else but if any of that sounds appealing to you go right on in just trust me on this one I think you'll be really glad that you read it because I definitely was so thank you Anna you're my queen. And the next book that I read slash I am still reading, because like I said, I just haven't been in the reading kind of mood lately, is Ages for Hawk by Helen McDonald. And this is actually nonfiction. And we follow Helen <laughs> as she is coping with the loss of her father, as well as um, trying to train a goshawk. She's always been a huge fan and admirer of falconry and she's finally decided to take that leap and purchase one of her own so through this very intimate process of training this goshawk she's also working through her grief and um where she's at in her life and she also weaves in the story of th white who is quite a famous british author that I didn't know anything about really before reading this, but it sounds like a strange combination of elements and themes, but it works so, so well. The pacing of this book is really lovely. Helen's observations on life and where she finds herself, I enjoy reading about. I don't know. It's just like a very calming, educational, and at times like kind of humorous read. And I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm now learning about this bird that I just didn't even know existed or that there was such a huge community of falconry or falconers out there. I don't know. I'm learning something new and I'm really enjoying it and I'm just vibing. So yes, this is what I'm reading. And again, I'm not reading not because I'm not enjoying the book. It's just, it's just like too mentally draining and my brain just wants to watch the housewives when I'm sick. You know what I mean? That's my excuse. <laughs> so anyway, those are all of the books that I read while I was on vacation slash I'm still reading. But like I mentioned to you, there were two days where I was not deathly ill. And of course I decided to use those two days and do some book storing. And I actually picked up one book today from the bookstore I used to work at, which was like such a sweet moment walking in there. And there's somebody completely new working there. And I was like, I used to be you. <laughs> so yeah, that was nice. So actually I'll start with that one. I ordered this way back like early May, but obviously I left so I couldn't pick it up. And that is um, Journal of a Solitude by Mae Sarton. This is a booktube beloved read. My friend Alex loved it and anything they rep, I just have to copy them. So yes, I bought a copy of my own. And then the other three were from used bookstores downtown, which I never really go downtown, but I really should. I got two Jamaica Kincaid books because Sunbeam's Jess, AKA Jess, who's been on YouTube for, well, I've been watching her since like I was in high school and I'm 25 now. She does like lifestyle videos, but she is a huge reader and has always had great recommendations. And I just remembered her speaking so highly of this author and I'd been meaning to read it. And I actually saw this specific uh, title, A Small Place, before I left on my trip. And I really regretted not buying it. And luckily it was still there waiting for me. It was a sign and it was only $6. Yes, tiny little um, essay that I'm really excited to read. And then uh, at the other bookstore I went to, I saw this, uh, Annie John by Jamaican Kincaid. And I believe this is the autobiography of um, her mother, if I'm not wrong. I lied, 
fiction. So yeah, I'm really excited to uh, read Jamaica Kincaid. So I thought this would be a good, good place to start. And then for some reason, I saw this book that I know has circulated the tubes a lot. I feel like last year, I don't remember exactly what it's about, but it was calling my name and it was $15 hardback. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to go with it. And it is a uh, hurricane season by Fernanda Melchon, excuse me. And the bookseller said it was pretty heavy, kind of grotesque and intense. And I was like, all right, hit me. I'm down. So yeah, I have no idea what this is about. Like I said, I do remember seeing this cover constantly. I just could not tell you anything about the synopsis and I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm not even gonna redo the little blurb because I just wanna go into it blind. So yeah, those are all of the books that I have purchased recently and that I have read recently. And yeah, I hope we see each other soon. I'm sorry I was gone for so long, if you noticed. <laughs> and yeah, if you've read anything noteworthy recently, please let me know. I'm always down to add more books <laughs> and hopefully start going to the library. That's what I need to do. I'm, I'm done with the book buying for a little bit. And yes, I will see you very, very soon. I'm not going anywhere. We're back and hopefully we'll be feeling better next time we see each other. So. Bye.